This story contains adult themes, language, violence, real discretion is advised. Listen at your own risk. Salute, what's good? Welcome to the fucked up origin of some of your favorite children's stories. This one right here starts with a wealthy man's wife lying ill in the bed. She calls out for her daughter. Hey, yo, let me holler at you. Always stay true to who you are. Always keep it a buck and stay pure. And God will be there for you. I'm also going to be looking down upon you. And as she said those words, she moved on. The daughter wept and cried every day for weeks and months at a time. The dad figured it would be a good idea if he remarried. He married a beautiful woman with two beautiful daughters, but their heart was cold and black. One of the first things they did when they got to the house was take all of Ella's shit. Took her dress, took her shoes, took her bed. She had nothing to sleep on. She had to sleep next to the fireplace. They wouldn't even let her eat. The excuse was, you dusty, you dirty, you got on wooden shoes, you can't sit with us. She had to work for a meal. Like, what the fuck is going on? One day, the dad was on his way out, so he asked the girls, is there anything that I can get for y'all? The stepdaughter said that they wanted some drip and jewelry and every, anything and everything that his money could afford. Ella said, Pops, the only thing that I need from you or want from you is the very twig that brushes across your hat. So as he returns, he brings everything that the girls ask for, including that twig. Ella goes out and she plants this twig next and near her mom's grave. She begins to weep and her tears water the soil and it starts to grow. And as it grow, birds come and these birds become a friend. They communicate. She talks to them and they talk to her. Now, as this going on, the a message has been sent down from the castle that the prince will be choosing his bride this weekend. And all the beautiful women that live in the town is mandated to come. That's available. So immediately the stepmom and, and her daughters already like they in there like swimwear. He's going to choose one of them because my daughter's the baddest motherfuckers around here. Cinderella runs in. She's excited. She wants to go. The stepmom looks at her and say, you dusty, you dirty. You got on wooden shoes. You can't sit with us. Cin she says, please let me go, let me go, let me go. The stepmom said, if you can clean out that motherfucking fireplace in two hours and do everything that needed to be done, shorty, you can go. She runs back in. She yells out the window, ew, to the birds. The birds show up. She explains to them everything that needs to be done. They do it. They get it done in less than two hours. She runs to her stepmom. She said, look, I'm done. I did everything that you asked for in less than two hours. The stepmom looks at her up and down and say you dusty you dirty you got on wooden shoes you can't sit with us leave me she gets the crime look i did it all i'll clean up i'll be better i'll look better please let me go the stepmom said look finish the pluck the fireplace up and then maybe you can go but this time i'm only giving you an hour to get it done she runs and she goes back to the window. She calls out for the birds. The birds show up and they looking like, why are you not ready to go? She like, look, I need y'all to do what y'all did for me last time. The birds looking like, you trust this bitch? Like, you, you trust what the fuck she telling you? Because she didn't do it before. I don't think she going to do it this time. But you kept it a buck with us, so we going to do this solid for you. And the birds, they do it, they do it in less than 30 minutes. She go running to the stepmom. She's like, stepmom, I'm done. Look, 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 it's all finished. The stepmom look her up and down and say, you dusty, you dirty. You got on wooden shoes. You can't sit with us. Part my back, bitch. And walk out the door with her daughters. Ella is devastated. She don't know what else she could do. She runs outside and 
she sat next to the tree that she planted next to her mom's grave and she begins to weep and she said these words little tree little tree shake over me that silver and gold may come down over me and as she said those words birds come with a beautiful dress small birds come with some shoes some other birds come with a comb and a mirror for her hair and as they get her done up she truly becomes the baddest motherfucker this town has ever seen and when she show up to the door all eyes on her but the prince dumbass ain't even paying attention. His father had to tap him on the shoulder and say, Hey, boy, look what's coming through that door. Uh-huh. Yeah, you see what I see, don't you? The prince gets his thirsty ass up and put his hand out. See, before Ella got there, he ain't see nothing. Nothing that he even remotely wanted to choose. But at this point, he's choosing and he's choosing Ella. But it's a little more complicated than he thought it was going to be. They get out on the dance floor. They get to dancing. Every time somebody tried to interfere, he told all of them the same thing. There's no point in you trying because this is who I'm choosing. Get the fuck up out my face. I don't even know why y'all still here. As the evening came and it's time for Ella to leave, he tells her, let me walk you home. Let me take care of you, ma. She said, look, you can walk me halfway, but I don't want you to know where I live or where I stay. He says, why? You have a man? She said, no, it's complicated. But they get to walk, and once they get close by, she jets off, and he loses track of her. But he knows she went somewhere near this house in this pigeon coop. He sees the dad walking by. He says, excuse me, sir, but I was just with this bad motherfucker at the festival and I lost her somewhere nearby. I think she might be in that pigeon coop. The dad thought to himself, it can't be Ella. He called for his people to come cut down the goddamn pigeon coop. It was nobody in the goddamn pigeon coop. I don't know why his answer was to cut it down, sicko. But the prince had hope because he know day two is coming up. So he figured he'd see her again. Day two comes. Ella goes back out to the tree. She says, little tree, little tree, shake over me. That silver and gold may cover over me. And the birds bring back a better dress than the one she had on yesterday. Flyer shoes than the one she had on the other day. Red bottoms, you hear me? They do a hair better than they was the day before. So when she show up to the door, all eyes on her once again. The prince is waiting. He's already in the middle of the floor just looking at the door. Not dancing with nobody, not looking at nobody, not looking for nobody but Ella. When she walked through the door, he rushes over, put out his hand and say, what happened to you yesterday? Why did you rush off? She said, I told you it's complicated. We'll talk about it eventually. They get to dancing and the evening comes close. He said, let me walk you home. Let me take care of you. She says again, you can walk me halfway, but I don't want you to know where I stay. They get to walking, she jukes him, she runs up a pear tree. The prince is flabbergasted. He don't even know what to do or say. He know that she's around this way somewhere, this is the same house, but this time is this tree. He sees the dad, he like, yo, I was with the bad motherfucker I was with yesterday, again today. She disappeared somewhere around this away. Where could she be? The dad thought to himself, it can't be Ella. No, it can't be Ella. He called for his people and they cut down the pear trees. Nobody in there. Why is this this man's answer? 
every time to cut some shit down. This man's the pops need the beach put, but we ain't even gonna talk about that. But the prince is still optimistic because he know day three is coming. But this is the last day, so he got a little trick up his sleeve, and y'all will see later. So day three comes and Ella repeats the same rhyme at the tree again. The birds bring the baddest dress that you ever saw. It's badder than the other two. Badder than the baddest dress that you can think of. The shoes is badder than the baddest pair of shoes that she done had the last two days. And badder than the baddest pair of shoes you can think of. Her hair is flawless, not a grain out of place. This time, when she get there, the prince is already waiting at the door with his thirsty ass. He's asking her, why you keep running off from trying to take care of you? I bet you is, nigga. I bet you is. You, you trying to, you know what I mean, get the motherfucking yams. But, whole nother conversation. We ain't gonna put it on him. He might just really been concerned about it, you hear me? But I think he was trying to get the yams the first night, the second night, and the third night before the... You know what I mean? But anyway, they get on the dance floor. They do, they dizzle, they two-step. You know what I mean? As he talk to me like, yo, why you keep running off? Like, I'm really trying to take care of you. I'm really trying to get to know you. Like, what's the problem? She like, it's complicated. I promise I'll tell you one day. The evening rings near and she don't even wait for him to start walking her. Her ass start running. <laughs> Hussein boat out the door. But the prince had a plan. He put some sticky shit on the steps. So as she ran down those steps, her shoe got stuck. She left that motherfucker behind. She was gone. She wasn't playing. She was gone. Fast as a motherfucker. But the prince had this golden shoe with silver lining. Sleek, small, and slender. He sent out a message to everybody in the town that whoever foot fits in this shoe would be his wife you know the first place he went to was the house around that chicken coop and that pear tree that was cut down because he know the girl the baddest motherfucker in the town just had to be somewhere over there he know that so he pulls up he knocks on the door Hey, you. it's the prince, my G. How many daughters do you have living in D? The dad says two. What? The, think about it. The dad said two. Like, how the fuck you say two, my nigga? You only have one really living in there biologically. How the fuck you say two? I'm going to smack this shit out, doesn't it? But anyway... It's true. He said, okay, bring the first one to me to try on the shoe. The first girl comes. She grabs the shoe. She takes it to her room. She puts her foot in, but her big toe is a little bit too big. The mom pulls out a knife and say, cut that motherfucker off. Because once you become princess, you'll never have to walk again. Daughter doesn't hesitate. She cuts the big toe off, puts her foot in there, hides the pain, and shows the prince, hops on the horse, and they ride off. But as soon as they ride past the tree that Ella planted at her mom's grave, the birds yell out, Hey, you! Son ain't right. Look down at her feet. The motherfucking shoe bleeding, yeah? The prince looked down. Like, what the fuck is going on? Turn the horse around, take her back to the house, say to the dad, I don't know what type of shit y'all got going on up in here, but this motherfucker done cut her toe off. She ain't the one. Bring me the other one. The other one come down. He hand her the shoe. She takes it upstairs. Her toes get in, but her heel a little bit too big. 
The stepmom pulls out a knife again. You would think these motherfuckers learned their lesson the first time, but obviously not. She said, cut a piece of that heel off because once you become princess, you won't have to ever walk again. Her daughter didn't hesitate. She cut a chunk off, put her foot in there, hid the pain, and went riding off with the prince. Y'all know what the fuck happened next. As soon as they rolled by that tree, here go the motherfucking birds. Ew! I know you ain't that motherfucking stupid. Look down at her foot. It's bleeding, it's blood dripping all over the place. She ain't the bride, my G. The prince looked down. He see the blood. At this point, he's flabbergasted. He don't understand what the fuck is going on and why these motherfuckers mutilating themselves. He turned the horse around and take her ass back and he tell them, I don't know what type of shit y'all got going on up in here, but y'all telling me that no more women is in this house. You don't have no more daughters, sir. The dad said, no. The only other person here is the deceased, is the child that my deceased wife left behind. Like, what, nigga? What? Like, he need to be punched in his mother. If I was the prince, I'd have put the beats on him. I'd have punched this nigga right in his throat. What do you mean the child that your deceased wife left behind? That's your daughter, my nigga. Fuck is wrong with you? But anyway... The prince say, all right, I ain't worried about all that. Go get her. The queen said, no. She's dusty. She dirty. She got wooden shoes. She can't set with us. She's an embarrassment. The prince said, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to your husband. Go get her right now. Goes and get her. Hands of the shoe. But before she even gets her feet all the way in the shoe and he make eye contact with her, he knew that this was that bad motherfucker he'd been dancing with for three motherfucking days. And they ride off on the horse. But this time when they ride past that tree, the motherfucking birds say, hey, you, you got the right one this time. You know what I mean? It doesn't stop there. So, they get back to the castle, and they planning the wedding. It's time to let the village and the town know, and all the surrounding areas that the prince then chose, and it's about to be his wedding day, and it's going to be a three-day festival. We're sending invites out to everybody to watch the prince marry the one he chose. So, y'all know what happened next. The stepsisters figured that they was going to go to the wedding and be supportive of their sister. No, these motherfuckers just wanted to be close to the bread. See, they should have thought about that shit when they was on that fuck shit, but they didn't. But anyway, we wrapping it up. So, as they on the way, the birds ain't having that shit. The bird's like, where the fuck they think they going? You're not going up in there with Ella and her man trying to get cozied up the way that y'all treated our peoples. And they pluck their motherfucking eyes out. And Ella and the prince lived happily ever after. And them two motherfuckers was blind with no eyes for the rest of their motherfucking life. Peace. Yo. This story is similar to a lot of the, the, the versions that we know and love and shit. But this, this, this story right here, the step, the dad, agitated the fuck out of me throughout. I apologize for stopping here and there. Y'all know I add my little twist to, to this shit and all that. You know what I mean? It's a lot, a lot of people that do this shit a lot better than me that probably narrate and tell the story exactly the way that it was told that's not my style i do it off of memory whatever whatever this is the last one for the next three weeks because little red riding hood would be next but 
50th anniversary of hip hop. We getting back to that. I hope y'all enjoy this. Y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all think about this particular story. Y'all be easy. I catch y'all next time. You know what I mean? And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a motherfucking comment.